Welcome, Welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hello, friends. Welcome into the show. This is episode 134, and I am bringing in a very, very special guest for this episode. This is somebody who has been up to some pretty cool things, and. If you happen to search for any WordPress-related tutorials online, you will likely see this guy. This is Adam Prizer, who at the time of recording this intro right now, his brand is wpcrafter.com, which is WordPress for non-techies. As you'll hear in this interview, he's trying to copyright and trademark that. Um, But he has a YouTube channel of, get this, 220 plus thousand subscribers And a couple views, and by a couple, I mean 17,612,000 plus views on his YouTube channel. So needless to say, Adam is the real deal. He is an authority in the WordPress realm. I've actually been trying to get him on the show for a little while. I was so excited that he finally got back with me and was open to coming on. So it was funny because this talk, there were so many different things we could talk about because he's a very seasoned entrepreneur. He's got a lot of products. Again, we just went over his YouTube stats. Um, But one thing that was interesting is we were originally going to talk about a bit of a different topic, but when, when the conversation continued on, I realized we were really talking about content creation. And then as you'll hear in this interview, we really talk about content creation in the the realm of you as a web designer and how you can create content that is going to boost your brand, get clients, build trust, build authority. And the good news is, is you don't have to be a quote unquote YouTuber or an influencer. You can create content step by step, slowly but surely, that is going to help grow your client base and again, build that trust and authority. That's exactly what we dive into in this episode. I really enjoyed hearing Adam's thoughts on this. Him and I are both a big proponent of video, so heads up, you're gonna hear some tips on video and uh, really, really enjoyed this talk. It's pretty wide ranging, but again, at the core, I, I realized that we were really talking a lot about content creation. So you're gonna hear a bit of a different topic in the beginning, but we, we kind of make our way into that. And again, Adam was a blast to talk to. I would really encourage you to listen intently on what he says about marketing and content creation because it's not just for somebody like me who has a podcast and who has a YouTube channel. It's for you too. And again, just a reminder, you don't need to to go wild with content creation all the time. You can just do it slowly but surely, once a month, once every couple weeks, blog post, a tutorial, whatever suits you, you can do. And I'm telling you right now, it will help you get clients and build your trust and authority. So I'm so excited for you to check this out. Now, one thing in addition that will help you with content creation is to how to know how to title it and make sure it shows up on the Google. And we're talking about SEO. I would love to help you with SEO if you just don't even know where to start because SEO can be very overwhelming. It's a, it can seem like such a shady, spammy world, but the reality is SEO, if you know the basics, it's actually pretty simple and you can do a lot of really good damage, as I like to say, in the SEO world by just knowing the basics. So I'd love to help you out with that. You can join my SEO course today. It's open and available for you right now. It'll help you know the basics and the fundamentals so you can make sure your content is ready and aligned with what you want to do online and make sure it gets found online through SEO. So without further ado, here's Adam. We're going to talk content creation. Again, the dude is awesome and he knows what the heck he's talking about. Enjoy. Adam, welcome on to the podcast, dude. I remember I reached out to you when I was just about to launch the podcast, but you've been busy. You've been creating products like crazy. You've built up your little YouTube channel to well over 200,000 subscribers, closing on 18 million views. So you've been busy. So I can't even tell you how pumped I am to finally have you on the podcast, man. Welcome in. Thanks for having me, you know, and when you first invited me, I think it might have been last year. Um, I think I have like had lots of little busy seasons, you know what I mean? And so when you um, asked me the second time around, I said, there's no way. I, I'm going to turn him down. You know, we've been friends on Facebook. We've bumped into each other multiple times. So it was a definite yes. And congratulations for making it this far with your podcast. 
Thanks, man. Yeah, it's been one of the most rewarding and awesome, fulfilling things I've ever done. And I mean that in full sincerity. The podcast, I just love podcasts. I love diving into topics in more detail without having to feel like I need to rush through it. Um, I love the the community of podcasting. There's really a lot of great people in podcasting who are so open with their knowledge and their expertise and their experience. And you're no different. I know you are obviously an open book with, with what you do, which we'll dive into here. So, so yeah, thanks, man. It's been awesome. Like I said, I, I reached out to you right when I started the show uh, and I wanted to circle back around because you actually, I'm going to ask you kind of what you do for folks who don't know you yet, Adam, but uh, I was building my Learn Dash course recently and I could not for the life of me figure out how to get the registration it, uh, option up on the login page because I don't have it set up like that. And then I referenced one of your tutorial videos and you showed exactly how to do that. So you always come through for me with a lot of WordPress tutorials and stuff. Um, before we dive in, man, yeah, do you want to let everybody know who doesn't know you, where you're based out of? And w I guess you do a lot, but what do you do? What's the short version of what you do? Yeah, so I am based out of my home. Like uh, most people, we all work from home. It's such a blessing to be able to work from home. And home, home for me is Southern California. Uh, I've born and raised in Southern California. I don't think I'll leave. If I leave, it'll be for tax reasons. I was <laughs> just going to ask that. High, yeah, well, we have the yeah. highest tax rate. I've, my, my conversations with my wife is let's like schedule moving away for a year and a half and then we'll move back uh, to be back with family. We've had that conversation many times. Uh, but uh, what I'm, most people are familiar with me from is my YouTube channel, which I started in 2014. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh. I'm a veteran now. And. It originally just started as I'm, I'm naturally a very curious person. So it started as me uh, making videos on something I might have just discovered how to do as it relates to having a website, uh, most of the time WordPress. And so most of my videos have been out of curiosity. I never started it with any intention of being where I am today. It, I've just sort of made it to where I am today. And it was always to make something to help somebody. And uh, hundreds, probably close to maybe a thousand videos later, here I am six years later, and there's hundreds of thousands of subscribers. It's impacted millions of people's lives per year uh, and helped them build a business for themselves online. And through the process, I have gotten involved in other areas of product creation, creating products for people. You know, you hear it said many times, you first build an audience and then you find out what they need and then you build it for them. Uh, I guess I kind of did that unintentionally. And so today I've got uh, multiple products that are powering hundreds of thousands of websites. Everything's been successful. It's been a huge blessing and it's all been unexpected. I was wondering if you started your channel with a game plan and a vision or if it just kind of happened. I feel like some of the best success stories are those that just kind of it just kind of happened. Like the way I got into web design, I don't know if you know, Adam, I just kind of fumbled my way into it. I didn't like set out a nice business plan. It just kind of happened. And then I, same thing, I started teaching and I loved it. And then that started blowing up. So that's really cool to hear, man. And actually it's, it's a great kind of, it lays the foundation for the talk we're going to have today about influence and how to use that to, to build a business around that. Because not everyone are going to be you or me with any sort of YouTube channel or podcast, but a lot of web designers can still get clients and do a lot of amazing things with the influence they already have, right? Or, or the network that they already have. Absolutely. And, um, I think influencer was, was influencing being an influence, you know, actually, let me just like step one step back. I hate the phrase influencer, right? But you have to accept it. You know what I yeah. mean? At a certain point, you just have to accept that's kind of like what it is. And it's actually a big responsibility, but yeah, there was certainly no game plan of this, of this happening. It was really when I, when I started, and I know this isn't the question, but I, I, I just love to to say it. Uh, I was watching YouTube videos and one of the guys I watch he's super popular on YouTube. One of the most popular YouTubers, his name is MKBHD. I don't know if you've ever come across MKBHD. The guy made his first video when he was 15 and he was reviewing a laptop. 
Mm. He was 15. He was like a little, I think he was, might've been 13 actually. He's like a little kid and you could go to his channel and you can see his first video and you see him there as a tiny little kid. And now he's an adult. He, he gets, um, he, in the last year he interviewed, it went to the Tesla factory, friends with Elon Musk, interviewed Elon Musk, interviewed Bill Gates, interviewed uh, Sindar. I, I forget his last name, the guy running uh, Google. I mean, that's the level of where he's at because he did something he stuck with it and i saw it and i'm like if this kid can do this i can too <laughs> mm. that's pretty much uh pretty much how it uh, uh, evolved yeah yeah well i did want to hear some of the backstory particularly how you've done videos and how you got into product stuff and i know a lot of people listen as you know my audience are freelance web designers and again anyone who's thinking i don't know if i want to be a youtuber or a coach you can still, again, going back to the point of using whatever influence you have in a, in a local circle, in a professional network, whatever, you can still do a lot with what you've built up for yourself and what you're interested in. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited to, to kind of have a, an in-depth conversation about this because I think what you and I have both been through, Adam, kind of relates to that. And I was thinking back to my journey as a web designer and freelancer. I started with my personal network. Uh, as far as getting clients and again, kind of using the influence that I had. And then it kind of, you know, kind of grew legs from there and got referrals and stuff like that. Um, would you say, and I know you don't do any coaching per, per se, but from a lot of the people that you've helped, um, what are some of the areas of influence that you've seen that a lot of people have that maybe they're not thinking about, or maybe they don't realize like, ah, maybe I can get clients in this area. Or maybe, you know, like what are some areas that you've seen a lot of people have success in web design in? Well, I think actually everybody needs to realize that they do influence people. They just don't realize it. Mm. Everybody is an influencer. Uh, if, you know, what do people come to you for? So like, say you might be the guy that always knows the latest movies and someone will come to you, a friend and say, Hey, you know, uh, that, what, what, what good movies are out or, you know, what good shows are out or where's the best sushi places in the, in the neighborhood. Uh, everybody's already an influencer. Um, but I think that for, especially web design, let me actually make a confession Part of the reason I started my YouTube channel on that particular topic is because I thought, you know, I'll help people like as a web developer, not like like but more niche specific things. And sure. that's actually so. And it's it's funny because if you go to some of my earliest videos, you'll see a little advertisement that slides up at the bottom that says, oh, if you would like help doing this, visit this website or, or you know, go here or contact me. And the reason I did that was because. I knew that whenever you you say someone's interested in your services, you're you're now having to build a rapport with that person to get them to trust you, right? It's so much easier for someone to say, I'm gonna hire you if they can trust you, if they know, like, and trust, right? You've heard that phrase many times, know, like, and trust. What what better way to say, oh, you're interested, um, uh, you know, we're talking about doing this project together. Oh, you can uh, get to know me by going to my YouTube channel and just look at some of the tutorials. And then if you, you can learn how to uh, let your personality come out, uh, in them, you're, you can naturally get people to like, know, and trust you through passively through a video. So there's so much less resistance when it comes time to signing on the dotted line and um, doing it, uh, you know, whatever contract and work together. I, and so it's funny like that. I, I, I just wanted to get that out. So, you know, if there's web designers right. listening to this. Um, they are experts in things. There are experts in things in their niche. And it's a lot easier to communicate to people that are interested in hiring you that you're the expert when you have all this other stuff over here that kind of establishes you as the expert. That's a great point. Two really important things there. I love that you said everyone is an influencer because I, I don't think most people consider themselves that. I know I didn't. Even when I started this whole thing, I didn't really consider myself any sort of expert or influencer. But then I realized, wow, there's a lot of people looking up to me or like one, curious about what I've done with my business. And even if it's on a very level, a small level, even if you just have a few local clients who don't know anything about SEO, but you know a little bit, you are the expert. You're going to be influenced 
influencing them. So even if it's just a few people, you are still, like I said, an influ- an influencer. And I, I love that, man. I think building some sort of authority with content, whether it's tutorials, YouTube videos, free webinars, blogs, whatever, I back you up 100%. It's so it's so worth the time, isn't it, just to get your expertise out there? Because it's like a sales tool that can be used over and over and over again. It's like an empl- the way I view uh, video content, but it's the same way you can view all kinds of content. It's the same way you can view the podcast, uh, written content, all of it is... I always look at it and I say, when I put a video, this is like a little worker who's going to work for me night and day tirelessly. I only have to put the effort in once and I put it out there and in 24 hours a day, it's working to either generate a new subscriber, uh, generate someone uh, new to the channel. It helps people uh, in all of that. And so it's it like everybody's got to get in the content game, no matter what business you're in. Obviously there's web designers talking here. You got to get in the content business. You got to show off. You got to, got to show off your expertise. And yes, everybody is actually an expert in, in, in a lot of times we can have that. Um, I know what people are thinking right now. They have imposter syndrome, right? That's like a, we, we don't hear that phrase used as much as it should be because everybody feels this. I'm an imposter. And that's yeah. what blocks them. Like you probably felt it when you started this podcast, like, who am I, you know right. what I mean? So oh, I talk, gonna, yeah, I've talked about it a lot. Yeah. It's so important. And then for, especially for web designers, when you get into an industry where there's really good designers, there's great coders, there's so much to learn. And it can be so daunting. And the first thing to think is, well, who am I? Like, I can't design like this person. I'm never going to like, look, Adam, I'll be honest. You are one of my competitors in some way, although I love coopetition, but you are kind of a competitor to me on YouTube. And it's easy for me to look at you and be like, how I'm never going to get to 200,000 subscribers plus. And I mean, I have a couple million views now, which is awesome, but not near what you have. But at the same time, I've learned that I don't look at you as a competitor. I look at you and I am excited about what you're doing because we're doing some similar overlapping things, but we're also doing kind of our own things as well. And I, I don't know, that's definitely the mindset that I have for people getting into business is don't look at somebody and and look at that comparison type under that comparison lens, because yeah, imposter syndrome is so real and it'll devastate you early on. And that's definitely something I try to help everyone avoid. It's like everybody feels it, but no one talks about it. You, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just uh, it's a it's a brutal thing that you have to deal with. Uh, and it can be a barrier into you accepting the fact that you're an expert in, in things. People go to you um, on a professional level. People go to you because you know how to do things that they don't know how to do. So you're an expert in these these matters. Um, and there will always be someone that knows more than you. There'll always be someone that's better than you. But that doesn't that doesn't diminish uh, the contribution that you can make into people's businesses uh, to to really help them. So, yeah, good point. I, I think if web designers need to get on this YouTube game, I mean, they literally need to be putting them figuring out how to be on camera. So, you know, when someone's curious about their services or their expertise. It's like the best business card in in the world. If you have a a YouTube channel where you've put some uh, halfway decent, um, uh, you know, just do decent enough job with the video quality and like the audio quality quality, and just show, show, you know, uh, just show people what you can do, you know, show people what you give strategies out. Uh, email those videos out to your existing clients to generate views. It'll naturally organically generate views, you know, and don't you actually don't even have to be like and then come to me for uh, if you need people just naturally do it. You know, just today I have people yeah. asking me to like do websites for them and I had to apologize. I'm sorry, I'm far. I'm focused on all this other stuff. Um, but um, I'll actually tell you the leads that have come through from my videos have built other agencies. So mm-hmm. some smart people at some point, they were really nice to me and they were, um, uh, very supportive of me and they were starting their web agency. And I'm like, and, and, and I, I got to know them a little bit and I'm like, Oh, Hey, you can maybe help this person asking me to help them. Maybe I can send them to you. I've built like these agencies uh, through these leads. Wow. Just for, yeah. I mean, obviously at your and level, free, you're completely free. 
Yeah, you're getting so many people from all over the world. So naturally, there's going to be, you know, so much need and interest there for help. And then, yeah, it's awesome to see kind of these micro relationships and partnerships forming, which is really cool. And let, those are a couple of great points, man, because I totally agree. I think most web designers, and even if they don't want to become a quote unquote YouTuber, or you don't want to get fancy lights, like you don't need a mic like you have and I have. I still have my old Blue Yeti, which these are like, you know, you can get it for 50 bucks, 75 bucks now on Amazon. I started doing videos for my clients without any sort of microphone. I just did it right into the laptop. And even when I, when I started doing videos for clients, that built authority for me. And my, I just had a resources page. I had a client resources page where I overviewed the tools that we use. And I can't tell you how powerful that page was for me to look like an authority and to build that authority. So I, I completely agree, man. I, th I think that's definitely very, very worthwhile to build that authority. And like you said, I like the analogy of a little worker. You, you make it once and then you let it keep on working for you. And of course, if you have a strategic approach, you can really make sure the video is, is you know, clearly for your ideal clients. Because the next thing I was going to ask you is, how do web designers make these type of videos without attracting DIYers? Because uh, most web designers want to work with businesses, not somebody wanting to learn w WordPress. Would you just recommend making videos like I did on the tools we use or maybe in-depth guides on like some trusted plugins and stuff like that? Is that kind of what you have in mind? Well, how about this? You need to value anyone that's willing to click that play button for whatever reason on your video, because that's like them helping that video find the right person. Mm. So if I make a video, I don't care. I don't even care if the person can speak English. You know what I mean? If they're reading subtitles, if I make a quality video and I don't care if someone ever leaves a comment, gives a thumbs up. Most people don't like to do those things anyway. But if you're watching that video, you're giving me watch time. You're giving me a view and that's going to help it find the right person that mm. is going to be what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? The person that will engage in, in this use case, uh, the person that is going to take action and say, hmm, I'd rather hire this person. I they, they obviously know what they're doing. They know more than me. I, I'm going to contact them and just get this taken care of because they're they're there's that's like who you want right if you're an a, yeah. a web agency you want the guy that says i just need to get it done I, I i don't care what the cost is i mean of course you care but you don't care paying someone to do it you just got to get the dang thing done uh so diyers are great but even if it's more just i'll tell you one of my biggest pet peeves with any business and go to their website and i just see stock photography like i i don't see who's involved in the business. I don't see if it's a family business. I don't, I don't see any of that stuff. You know, one of the things I've always said in any, like if I do a podcast interview on this, people buy from people, you know, you could just make a video and put it on your website. And if you can get someone to your website, that video will do the selling for you more, way better job than any block of text or well, case studies are good, uh, but that could get them more interested into the case study. Cause I want to buy from a person, you know what I mean? I want to like establish some kind of a connection with the person. Um, and so so there's so many benefits. Gosh, this podcast is talking to, is ending up being all about you got to make video. <laughs> hey, dude, but, look, I love it, man. You are speaking my language. And that's one thing I love about just diving into a topic and see where it goes, because this all relates to this topic, though. Like if you're going to build your business and going to use your influence, you do you have to sell you. And I man, Adam, I completely agree. Like this is one of the, the main things I work on with students is I often see their websites and I'm like, who the hell is this business? Like who's behind this? Cause I don't know. It look, is this like a 25 person agency? Is it just you and your mom's basement? You don't have to you know say that, but you can at least show who is behind the brand. That is so critical. And people do buy from people. And I'd be curious to see what you've seen even after the 2020. Like I feel like people are more interested in shopping local and working with people they know, like, and trust more than ever now. Would you say that's a, a true statement? Well, I always like to go local. Um, you know, if, if, I, but then on the, the flip side, if it doesn't, 
if it's not something that, that needs to be local, I want to go with the best, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I want to go with local, the best, but then how do you even know what the best is? So the, it, it's really based on something else, right? Which is, you know, do I, ha, ha, do they make me feel like they can get the task done for me? Do they make me feel like they can give me what I'm really after? And a lot of that, it's not going to be from a picture or image. You know, a lot of that's built with like rapport and things of that nature, uh, rep- you know, uh, having rapport or even just like video testimonials that are like sincere and real, not like overly produced, like, you yes. know, um, yes. not look like it was done on Fiverr, but, you know, uh, something, something specific. But uh, certainly I do think um, uh if if you if your target is to dominate your local area, especially in this this niche, you are going to have the advantage. The more that you put your face on things, the more that you you make it seem like a more personal experience. And typically, those are the kind of clients that really help you build a web of of referrals versus it all coming in from fresh new leads on the internet. Yeah, look, there's a really important point you just hit on, Adam, that I I want to bring back up. And that is, if you even just do one video explaining who you are and what you do and what type of clients you help, I know so many web designers are terrified to get on camera. I know, you know, Mm -hmm. I I understand that. And I have tons of resources. I've tried to help people with that. But it doesn't have to be overly produced. It could be literally as simple as as long as the lighting is halfway decent. You could even do it on your phone to as a starter point. But if you have something that is on your website explaining who you are, builds that level of likability, trust and 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 loyalty there. That will, and you said it, be a salesman for you 24-7. And that really does take so much out of it because if you don't have video or don't have some sort of explainers on your website, you have to do that over and over and over with customers and leads face-to-face or call-to-call. So I I totally back you up, man. I I think there's really no better time and there's no more important time to add some sort of video component to, to your website. Yeah, and here's another take on it. Because I know how I am. I don't want to pick up the phone and call you. I don't. I yeah. really don't. Especially if um, it's that first call. I don't like doing that. So, like, for example, when I, whenever I'm hiring anyone for anything and I go, maybe I go to Yelp, right? Um, uh, what I'll, it's funny. I've just got a call from someone I hired on Yelp. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, Talk I, about timing. I, I, yeah, I know. It's like, yeah. Um, anyways, I, for me, I would rather search information out on you first. And so I'm going to yeah. like find like three or four, as many places I could find that I think might be able to solve my problem. And I'm going to go to their websites uh, and I'm going to prefer some way of contacting them without picking up the phone and calling them. That's just the way that I am. I think a lot of people are that way. This, this, I'm that way. You, yeah. 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 I and, hate, and, I almost do, like, I never answer my phone or, and I don't want to call anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, even if, even if like, you know, nowadays, like on the phones, you know, I know for my phone, I have like a, an iPhone and you can make it. So if it's not a contact in your list, they go straight to voicemail. Mm-hmm. I ain't got time for that. You know, and uh, especially in the web design space, these are most of the time they're business owners and they ain't got time for that. You know what I mean? They want to be efficient and all that. So um, that's why having a good website yourself is crucial, but also the things that you can add to it to give yourself a competitive advantage, especially when um, it doesn't take a massive amount of effort, you know. Well, you hit an interesting point there, which I haven't really talked about much on the podcast, but it is true. Clients are going to research you. If they're serious about working with you, they're going to look at your social media, your website. I mean, they may not do like, you know, go terribly in depth, but I, especially when it comes to a website, which is often going to be a big purchase, it's not like a quick service and you're never going to hear from them. It's often a very long-term relationship. It's often several thousand dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. So it's a very big investment for a business. And yeah, they're going to look at you and they're going to look at your website. And this is where I think the content marketing piece with doing videos or tutorials come into play. Because let's say just hypothetically, you go to a networking group, somebody really likes you, they look at your website. Well, how great would it be if you had a video that sells yourself even more and explains so clearly what you do and who you help and how you can help them. And then if they, 
Google you and they see that you've got several videos about your knowledge of design or SEO or coding or whatever, they're going to feel even more comfortable. And even if those tutorials don't have a ton of views, that's okay. You still put it out there and you showed your expertise and like, Right there, you have just increased your chances probably by like 90% of closing that client rather than having to do it all over again or try to build that relationship from scratch. So what a perfect way to like visualize everything we've talked about so far, because it's so true, man. That's where videos, content, a little bit of, you know, expertise building. That's how this can all play out for every web designer. Yeah, and, and here's here's an idea. If I was a web designer or just someone that's doing web related work, marketing at web agency, I would probably, so there's different types of videos that you can make and different type of content you can make. What I would probably suggest someone make is just a regular video, maybe once a month that says what's working now for my clients. And what yes, it's doing great. is it's establishing multiple things. Number one, it's establishing that you have clients, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and that obviously there must be something about you if you have clients, you know what I mean? That you might, you, either you do a good job, uh, you're very likable or whatever. And people, and you're also establishing the fact that you, you need an expert that knows what's working now, you know what I mean? Because what worked two years ago is not working now. Well, there's certain fundamentals that do work, but, uh, yeah. you know. Um, and it's showing that you have a grasp on where where things are and where things are going. And it's actually like an evergreen content idea, too, meaning you're, you're always going to have a different idea of what's working now. So you and it could be about um, – uh, anything. So what's working now generating leads on your website? Well, maybe doing this kind of thing with a phone number or doing this kind of thing with a contact form and then feeding it into here and then doing this, uh, this email automation uh, where we're, we're sending these five emails. And, you know, if I was watching that, I'd be like, wow, that, that does make sense. That would work Great with me. Point. Yeah. Right. I don't want to do it though. Can I hire you to do it? You know, <laughs> Yeah, what a great point, Adam, because I was going to kind of circle back around on one of my earlier questions, which is what type of content can web designers do? I think you hit the nail on the head because mo most web designers are probably like, oh, OK, this sounds great. But am I going to have to like create a content list and, you know, research SEO and all this stuff and do videos? Well, you could. But what a great way to just take what you know, even if it's not that much, even if you just have a little bit of expertise in one area, again, you know way more than your client who doesn't know anything about that. And if you make that some sort of content piece on what's working, better yet, if you can get some results from your client and if they're comfortable with sharing some basic information about maybe the increase of leads or results or revenue, that's all case study material that could back that up as well. What a, what a great idea, man. I love where your head's at with that because I think that's super, super super powerful. And the cool thing about that too, is like you said, it builds your authority. It shows the problem and the challenge, but shows the solution and probably shows the client that, you know what, I don't want to do this myself. I'm going to hire Josh and his team or Adam and his team or whoever's listening right now, you and your team to do that. Great point, man. I love that. That's such a solid point when it comes to thinking about the type of content web designers could put out. Yeah. And, and you can also do it in a way to speak to what the potential client wants. No potential client really wants a website, right? Uh, I don't even want a business to be honest. You know what I mean? Ultimately I want to sit on a beach and sip a pina colada. Um, uh, well, that's part of what I want. I don't want that now. Or I, I get <laughs> so that's bored why you stayed like in, that's hour. what, yeah, that's right. That's why you stayed in California though. Right. <laughs> yeah. The pina colada's <laughs> kept you there. <laughs> the nice cool weather. No, it's family actually. Um, yeah. so, but you can speak to what the client wants, you know, clients usually want leads, sales, clients, customers, uh, uh, growth in their business. That's all that they want. You know, uh, there's, um, uh, I've actually made this video twice. I want, uh, I have a couple products. Uh, one of them is called it's a card. It's a card abandonment solution. And it's so what cart abandonment is, if you have an e-commerce site, uh, someone goes, puts something in the cart, goes to the checkout, puts their email address in and they get distracted for numerous reasons. They change their mind. They get distracted. They go off off the site to look for a coupon and they never make it back to complete the purchase. The plugin captures the email and sends a series of emails out. And it's funny. 
I've made this video several times, just trying to get people to use this free plugin. It's completely free. Like, like it's on hundreds of thousands of websites. It works. It'll make you thousands and thousands of dollars. Doesn't cost you anything. Takes 10 minutes to put together. So I've made this video multiple times showing my results using it and then how to set it up. Uh, if you have like um, uh, e-commerce clients, if that's kind of one of your niches, just making a video on this is what's working now. Card abandonment. What is card abandonment? This is what card abandonment is, and it works amazing. Here's some results we got. So this is what what happens. They leave the email. We send them this email, this email. Then we send them a ten percent off coupon. Boom! And That's you beautiful. can see from the results, uh, we capture thirty percent of those, and it ends up being ten thousand dollars a month. That's exactly my video, by the way. But of course, my thing is I want people to use the free plugin, and yeah. it's like twisting what is their that arm plugin? sometimes. I don't know if you said the name. What is that plugin, Adam? You you can, you can go just go in your WordPress site or go to WordPress.org and just type card abandonment. It's the number one result uh, because we the, the plugins just so good. There's no nags. There's no upsells. There's no cross sells. You literally just type card abandonment and you'll see it's got an orange graphic there with the logo. It'll say card abandonment for WooCommerce or something like that. Or, or uh, actually, I don't even remember what we call it. Oh, yeah. So uh, cart for well, by, by cart, cart flows, flows, but WooCommerce yes. cart abandonment. Abandonment recovery. Cool. Awesome. Yes. Card flows yeah. is a company I started in 2018. So yeah. And um, I, I wanted to get to some of the offerings that you have now for your audience, because it it's still this idea of like, you know, getting used to your clients and finding out what they need and just creating resources for them. Whether it's you with a massive YouTube channel, whether it's me through courses and my communities and this podcast, or whether it's a web designer with local businesses, the principle is the same. You got to find out what you do, who you help, and then what kind of content can, that you can create on a consistent basis to build your expertise and, and help them. And I, I definitely, I have seen that play out with you, Adam, as I've kind of tracked your journey, even just the last couple of years. I mean, I think I had seen some of your WordPress videos a few years ago, and then I'm trying to remember when I ended up seeing you more and more, um, that's when we got connected. And then now, like I said, if I search anything, WordPress, you're up there at some point. Like I said, I, I didn't intentionally search you when I had that learned ask question. I just Googled it and then you were number one. I was like, Hey, Adam's got a video on this. And that is the authority thing because there were other videos that had the same answer probably, but I know you. I like and I trust you. So I'm going to watch your video and that's the same kind of mindset. So yeah, turning this back around to how you've kind of done this with your brand, Adam, because we covered a lot of great points. Um, with your journey, like how did you keep track of what your clients and cust ideal customers were interested in? Because you could have gone all sorts of way with your brand at WP Crafter. Like how have you kept a pulse on that? And I'm sure everything you'll say will be able to trans, you know, transfer to our clients as, as web designers. But yeah, how, how, have, you, how have you kept a, pul a pulse on, on your customers and what they need? Yeah, it's a it's a, a great question. And I don't know if the answer the answer might be good for entertainment and some people might be able to relate to it. Um, I, I don't know how uh, I'm sure there we you're you're a great podcast um, interviewer, by the way. So you'll be able to help extract some <laughs> um, um, uh, some some value out of it as it relates to the audience. So I'm going to just say what I'm going to say and then I'll, I'll I'll leave that up to you. Perfect. So <laughs> um, uh, so. Uh, I'm naturally a curious person and I'll, I'll just be straight with you after making all these videos and trying so many different softwares, I know what I like and I know what I don't like. I, I have a strong feeling of how things should be done and a strong feeling of how things shouldn't be done. And I have an un canny ability to spot a gap in the market. Mm. Um, and so I'm able to see what others don't see. And then because I'm a user, I'm the actual end user. Uh, that's actually a, an interesting thing for people that are web designers. Um, you know, when they actually 
get out of making a website for someone else, but make a website for them themselves. Maybe not just, maybe they have an experiment with a side business and then they can see what it's actually really like. You know what I mean? Cause you, you can, you can get out of it. So for me, I'm ultimately the user. Uh, so uh, for example, I came out with a new product last February, February, 2021, and it's called Presto player. And what it does is it solves all these pain points with having an online course website or, or anything video related on your website. It solves all these pain points that people have. And there wasn't actually any market research that I had to know if this would be successful or not. Um, it was really a gut instinct that this is something that uh, a gap in the market that I discovered through my own experiences. And the same thing that goes for in 2018 when I released CartFlows. CartFlows is a tool for creating sales funds on your website. At the time, there was nothing like that for WordPress. You had expensive software as a service companies providing this for a very high premium, but there wasn't anything for a WordPress uh, website or a web agency that has a client that wants these types of things on their website. It just didn't really exist. So I identified this kind of gaps in the market mm -hmm. and my guts, my gut instinct has been right every single time. And that was with this Presto player, Cart Flows. I know is it was one of your big really. When did Cart Flows come out? Yeah, we released that in November of 2018. 18, and that's right. Yeah, 2018. So we're coming up on our third year birthday, and it's on over 200,000 websites. Uh, it's wildly successful, and it's. I don't care about that. I care about it helping people, and I really love getting. Um, Facebook messages from people saying, oh my gosh, you know, I'm doing this and this and this, you know, guy, another course creator guy, he, he's in a, in a third world country where like $2,000 a month is really good. And he's now using card flows to make over $2 million a year. Um, I love stories like that. You know, you know what I mean? So um, more, awesome. it's mostly about the user being successful using the product. Um, but that makes a successful product. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know cart flows is awesome with just with the upsells and downsells and uh, that mass with the, the abandoned cart and then everything else you're going is really cool. I know you're doing a lot of like e-commerce related stuff. And one thing I was curious about is as you built your channel, WP crafter, which by the way, when you started doing videos, did did you do it under WP Crafter or did that brand and that name come in later? It was always WP Crafter. The only, okay. uh, yeah, uh, the only thing that I, I considered multiple times changing that or maybe using my own name or something like that. And I just stuck it out with WP Crafter. It's very recognizable now. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a good the, name. The one it's good and short and it be, because you're not tied to one theme or one particular product you're it's wordpress you know all your stuff works with wordpress and different themes i think it's a great brand centric type of foundation type of, type of branding thank you and yeah now you do box yourself into because of the wp part is wordpress so i'm a little boxed into that but but it's okay people cut me slack when i talk about sasses every now and then mm. um but one one thing that did just organically appear through like in the early days and i don't know how it came out it just evolved was this phrase WordPress for non techies, which is really what was the initial hook that really pulled people in, uh, basically setting up the expectation. When you watch my video, I skip all the jargon, all the complication. And this is something that anyone can follow and understand and actually get. Uh, I think that's that, that, uh, not, and that's been butchered, of course, as most of the things I've done <laughs> sure. that have worked have been butchered and copied like 10 times over. Uh, it's OK, though. Uh, but uh, yes, that's my my claim to fame is that phrase. I tried to trademark the word non techies. Uh, oh, my really? attorney said that's not happening. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I tried. Yeah. So, so you started attracting this kind of DIY audience and getting further into WordPress. And then sounds like you kind of you just kept on producing content and expertise as you moved your way through your journey. I'm just fascinated by figure like 
like figuring out what your ideal clients are interested in. And I've really been working hard at this for myself. And I actually just recently launched a brand new funnel. Well, by the time this comes out, it'll be a couple months old, but a brand new funnel that helps people in three different categories. Because for me personally, what I've realized is, and this is, again, this principle I want everyone to take with businesses as well, even if they're just local businesses, is I've realized I'm helping people in three different categories, people who are learning web design, and this is where I often refer to a lot of your tutorials, Adam, and stuff, learning WordPress or using more tech kind of tools and stuff, people starting and growing their own web design business, and then people who already have a business, but they want to get to six figures and beyond. So those are really kind of my three customer subsets. And But it's taken a lot of time to figure out, like, who are my customers, where are they at, and it's, it's really hard sometimes to create content that is going to appeal to everyone, right? Like I know as a con- content creator, you create so much, there's probably some for that are really good for some people, not so good for others. Do you actually, do you have that in mind or do you just create whatever the heck you want to create because you think it's needed and you hope somebody likes it? What's your process with content? Yeah. So uh, great question, by the way. And it's the challenge actually that every business faces. I mean, it's a big challenge to identify. And what you find out is it's not like one customer avatar. It's not like just one ideal customer. Like you said, in your example, there's actually three, you know, and I actually face this all the time. It's like the big challenge with the products that I make. Like, you know, this is great for this group, but it's also great for that group. But how do I speak to both groups at the same time? It's, it's, it's very tough. It's actually very tough. And I used to actually think along those lines, uh, the early days of my, my YouTube channel. So I remember I was at my first word camp, you know, do you know the word camps for those listening that don't know what those are? These are like WordPress related events that are, uh, put together, organized and facilitated in cities around the world. You should go to one if you use WordPress, uh, at least one, uh, when, when they're back in person next year. I met my first one and uh, we had, oh gosh, what's his name? Um, he's the guy behind Copy Blogger and Studio Press, not the developer, not Brian Gardner, the other guy, the marketer guy. I forget his name. Uh, he kind of ha- comes across as a hippie, but he's like very insightful as it relates to sales and copy and messaging. I totally forget. Copy Blogger would be, I don't know if he's still involved in it. I know they sold a lot of that stuff off. Anyways. Um, the guy's like really eloquent with words, really eloquent in understanding who the customer is. It's and not Neil, are you talking about Neil Patel? No, or, not Neil Patel. Uh, so it was copy blogger. Um, cause copy blogger, I think bought studio press. Um, and it was under the copy blogger name. I've got to get his name. Uh, anyways, he's there and it's, and I'm sitting in the audience. I'd never been to one of these things and he's spitting off all this, uh, marketing, like, I mean, the guy's worth is it's worth going to listen to this guy. Mm. And so I get up and, and my first word camp and I'm like, I'm going to ask him a question. And I, and the question I proceeded to ask him in front of all these people. And I said, you know, I have a YouTube channel and I'm creating content for people, but I'm having a tough time because people tend to be in these groups, right? Like mm. I build websites using Divi. I build websites using this other tool or Elementor wasn't even a thing back then. Like, how do I make content for everybody? And uh, he actually didn't have a great answer to that question either. Mm. <laughs> so I stopped worrying about it. You know That's what I mean? Great. I just, I just create lots of different content and, you know, maybe this segment will watch this one, a different segment watches this other one. And then everyone watches the next one. Cause it's a common thing that affects everybody. So, um, you know, and I'm sure uh, and the same thing ends up happening with, with you and what you're creating right? Uh, you have content for everyone and then you have content that's specific to these specific groups, meeting them where they're at. Um, so, uh, that's a I great guess point. like the, <laughs> the yeah. long answer is there's only so much you can do. Hey, I love that, man. And I, I think everyone listening probably heard that and thought, okay, I feel better about this because when it when, relating back to like web designers for local businesses, 
the same thing. Local businesses are going to be in different places. Some businesses might be very new and they don't have any website presence. So their strategy is going to be completely different than a business who's had a website since, you know, 1998 and it's a family run business and their third generation and they already have a lot of domain authority. Like that's a whole different ball game. So I, I love that idea. Make your content and then you can always group it and organize it from there. That's kind of one thing I've done with this new like funnel thing is because I've really tried to make sure I'm helping people where they're at in their journey. Are they learning web design? Are they starting their business? Or are they scaling? And then all the content that I continue to produce, yeah, it might be a little scattered and random, but we can bucket all that content into the right place, you know, where it goes. And I think that's valuable for anybody, whether it's a service or a content creator. And if you are going to do content, that what a great mindset to have. Like it really, not that it doesn't matter, but at the end of the day, I think you could probably have a little analysis paralysis if you worry too much about about making the perfect content for this perfect customer. Just share what you know. Is that kind of your motto? Just share what you know, share what you're into? Exactly. And I think for uh, local web agencies, it, well, this is what I do in on the product side, and it applies to anyone that has a website. You have to have micro landing pages. Basically, you know, uh, so say you identify the three groups such as that you've done. Uh, for me, let me say Presto Player uh, as an example. It's great for marketers. It's great for course creators and it's great for blogs. So there's these three different use cases and, and why it's great for them is totally different from one for the other. Right? So if you have a blog, it's great because, um, um, there's all these like lead generation features and there's a speed optimization feature. So it doesn't slow your website down. If you're a course creator, you could care less about those things, right? Y it doesn't matter the, 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 how fast the page loads in inside of an online course. Um, in, people don't realize the speed differences anyway. It's just a, uh, for a testing tool. So what you, the, what, what we have to do is we have to have a page specifically speaking to that blogger, a page specifically speaking to that online course creator, a page specifically speaking to the marketer, uh, and how I, how this thing can help them. So it's the same thing that uh, you said. Um, so for a, a web design agency, I'm sure a lot of them, um, there's the general ones and then there's specialized, you're trying to specialize. You can speak to these different, these different groups of customers that you're trying to attract, but it, it's got to be done through like a specific page, um, on your website where you speak, speak to that person. Yeah. What a great point. Yeah. I, particularly if you have a service that can apply to anyone or there's a lot of different ways to use it, particularly for web designers who are generalists like I was. I didn't work with one niche. I worked with all sorts of businesses. So the type of website I would build for a home inspector would be vastly different from a steel company or something. But the idea of having those type of landing pages for certain services are key because it definitely helps people get a sense for, okay, how can this service or this product help me with, with where I'm at. So I love that, man. What a, what a great, what a great idea of like a use case for folks who have services. Cause I, I know I had a lot of clients who were like, well, anyone can use our product. And I was in a networking group. And one of the biggest takeaways I had from this in-person networking group was when you ask for a referral, you're not allowed to say anyone. Because if you say anyone, any, everyone just checked out. I, I like anyone is too vague. But if you say, in my case, I build websites for companies and I'm looking for home inspectors. Then suddenly everyone in the group is thinking, okay, what home inspectors do I know? Not what every person I know in my network who could use a website. It's like, okay, what home inspectors do I know? Just the slight little twist of those words, instead of saying anyone to like this type of person or this type of industry, what a, what a tremendous impact that had on me. And I know it would have what everyone else. And it really goes back to, you know, funneling the content and how you arrange your services. So I love that, man. That's great. And that could also make people feel like, um, especially if you have content specifically tailored for them or maybe a specific page on your website tailored towards them, it, it could make that person feel like, wow, I found the right place for me. You know what I mean? This is speaking exactly to me and my, my needs and they must know something about uh, my needs. But there's actually general needs that are common to all businesses, right? They all need more business. That's yeah. that's it, you know? Um, I mean, some people probably want their website just to convey information. 
but most people want to um, uh, most most people want to use it as a way of generating more business for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to have to relabel this, uh, retitle this episode because we've, we've really gone deep into content creation for web designers, which I think is actually awesome. A lot of people struggle with this. So there have been a lot of great gems from this already, Adam. I personally, I'm curious for you, and this is more of a selfish kind of question as somebody who does a lot of different content and is exploring, you know, how far do I want to go in certain areas? The content and products that you're diving into, do you do that based off of, of passion and what you're into? I, I know you talked about finding a gap in the market, but I imagine you could create products for WordPress in the, all kinds of different categories. What makes you want to focus on e-commerce and video? Is this stuff that you're just personally into and really excited about? How do you determine what you want to actually create a service or a product on? Yeah, it, it actually does... Well, the the challenging thing with anything you do in life, right, is uh, we're all dynamic individuals. And so our interests change over time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you might be passionate about something today and three years from now, you're not so passionate about that. You're passionate about something else. That's you know, true. we're all human, right? We all have different uh, passions. So um, for me, there's more of a broader thing. And that is I want to create tools that, really delight people. And so it's a benefit if it's something that you're super passionate about. And there definitely has to be a kind of knowledge or understanding of the problems. And that needs to be like natural, not just, uh, you're not, yeah, (laughs) exactly. You have to have some of that, uh, you, uh, individual interest in the thing. So uh, there's something I'll I'll bring up. There's very limited information out on this right now, but uh, one of my biggest targets that uh, product wise in 2021 uh, is actually something that's been bothering me for two years about some problem we all face. And that is regarding payments inside of websites, WordPress based websites. It's funny. Uh, cart flows is based on WooCommerce. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I love cart flows and I'm, I don't love WooCommerce. So, mm. um, it's been something that's bothered me for a long time. How, many moving parts there are to WooCommerce, how it doesn't meet every use case. Uh, it's, it's 10 years old technology. It's helps. Um, it's great for a certain thing, but most of the people that use it aren't using it for that certain thing. It's great to build an Amazon like store, but well, people use it for so many different, I think you might use it to sell your online courses. I do it through my uh, courses. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and my, uh, my web design club, I have a private community. I'm using Woo subscriptions for that. Yeah. Exactly. So WooCommerce wasn't really designed for that, you know what I mean? And we use it for that. So I've been working hard, assembled a team to build a, it's not a WooCommerce competitor, but it's for all those people that are using WooCommerce in a way that it wasn't designed for, mm, it's not gotcha. optimized for. So like the online course creator or the agency trying to collect uh, a payment or reoccurring payments, like recurring subscription payments. Um, and it's, I'm like super excited about it, but this is the thing I'm most passionate about today. Uh, it's funny. I haven't even really talked about it much. I might've made a little post in one little corner of the internet. So this is literally actually like breaking news, you know, oh, that, right. uh, in, in a few <laughs> well, months, this thing's coming out and it's, it's aiming. Yeah, maybe by the that? time this comes out, maybe there'll be a few more things out on it, but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm, so basically, um, the reason I'm excited about it is because it's a big challenge. Not anyone can pull it off. Uh, I think I figured it out. And I think that people are going to flip their lid uh, when they get to use this. Uh, and I'm doing it the WordPress way, which is it's going to be free. <laughs> it's going to be free. Uh, awesome. It's going to take subscription payments uh, and it's going to be free. But uh, I'm not actually trying to promote something by saying this. I, I, that's not why I'm saying this. I'm saying this because this is what I'm most passionate about today. Um, I'm, I'm passionate about solving big problems and then having that solution have a big impact and go as far as wide as it can be. And, um, 
get in as many people's hands as possible. Yeah. So you're, it w- yep. you're looking at problems and stuff that maybe don't have a clear solution or maybe there's not a trusted type of solution for, for in that case, I mean, really like if you're going to do e-commerce for WordPress, what are the options? WooCommerce, easy digital downloads. I mean, there are sites like member stack and other stuff, but that's not really WordPress exclusive. You can kind of do those with all sorts of platforms. So, so that makes sense that you're, you know, you're an end user, like you said earlier. So you're identifying the need. You're probably having a challenge in yourself. And so it sounds like you're, you're putting in the place, the pieces and places in, and, and you're obviously at a whole different level as far as being able to build a team and have some funding behind something like that. Um, but this can be done on a micro level too, right? With just services. Like if you, you yourself or your clients are often, and this is one of the biggest things I, I'm, I'm harping on for my students, just ask your, ask your clients or just, you know, open the, open the floodgates and just say, how's your business going? They will tell you challenges. And if there is a recurring challenge there, you got to come up with a a solution for that. Right. I think it's one of the best principles about finding some sort of service you can create for somebody or a product for somebody. Yeah. I, I, I would, I would think that part of what you're encouraging the students that you have to do is to, wrap up what they do, the kind of to productize some of what they do in like reoccurring payments. So they get that predictable income. Um, but they're being paid monthly for this. So this problem that they're solving for, for people that's limitless, like the, the types of solutions that, that can be assembled and put together to solve these problems for, for, for local business. It's, it's limitless. Um, and you can like, you can't even like price shop it. Right. You know, so like the card Mm -hmm. abandonment solutions. So if you have a neat local e-commerce customer, or if you have a, um, uh, if you have uh, any local business that needs to kind of automate follow up and, you know, warm up uh, people through email or stay connected to the customers that they have um, to get them to repurchase or to get them to um, use the service again. Um, I, I'll never I'll never get over the fact at how. I'll hire somebody like I'll give you an example. I had a problem with my air conditioning uh, recently, unfortunately. Oh, my gosh. This <laughs> thing was so dang summer. expensive. <laughs> in, right when it started getting hot here in California. Yeah. So like they were slammed anyways. And it was actually really expensive uh, to pay. But uh, a lot of these things, it's good to get it inspected yearly. Right. So. I'll never get over how none of these companies ever contact you in a year. None of them do. It's like, if I already hired you and I paid you, you'd be who I'd naturally go to. And if you would just contact me, say, Hey, it's time for that annual service. You know what I mean? Just click this button to choose a date and a time. They're not doing this. Like local businesses don't do this. And it's not just the air conditioner. Right. It's the home inspector. But you, know, you know what I mean? Like they could come and maybe do annual inspections. The termite uh, people, uh, you, you know, yeah. you're getting a house, a new house I, soon. Yeah, uh, we're building <laughs> right now. Yeah. And well, and it's interesting. It makes me think of the um, my auto mechanic who was in my networking group. He's my family auto mechanic. He got a business coach, and one of the first things they implemented was a recurring subscription offer for all customers. So basically, if you signed up for the, the, the recurring plan, you would get like crazy discounts. It would be way less expensive per year to manage a car, and you'd get discounts on your oil changes, regular tune-ups, and then you could add another car for like half the cost. And it really turned his business around because it was just what you talked about, that recurring subscription model that was less expensive for folks who were on it, much more valuable. And it increased his bottom line. It was able to scale. He was able to get a new building. And and it really all goes back to that, particularly in blue collar industries. Yeah. A lot of folks aren't doing that. So, and the same can be true for web designers. You can literally, I love that you said that, Adam, because it's true. It's limitless. You really can make any service you're doing right now, some sort of repeating offer or packaged offer. And I definitely wish I would have heard that advice years ago when I was doing it, because I did the whole project to project, feast to famine, didn't have the mind for a subscription style business, but it 100% can be done. And I do feel like people are getting more used to this. Have you found this as customers? Because like, I so I use Dollar Shave Club for my razors. That's, you know, monthly. I'm 
I got Disney Plus, Netflix. That's all monthly. My, my my wife has some subscriptions. We have subscriptions like all over the place. So we're used to it. Would you say that's a big customer shift over the last few years is getting used to subscriptions? You know, it's actually true. I'm speaking to my I'm, I'm speaking um, to myself here. You're actually so right because I have so many subscriptions and I was dead set against subscription. Like I remember when I first got married, it was I'm been married 18 years. First got married, like I didn't pay monthly for anything. I didn't have to pay monthly for or reoccurring for. Uh, now I got them all too, man. I got <laughs> bang, 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 bang. I got yeah. them all. You know, it's just uh, it's crazy. Um, uh, in in you know. As I've gotten older, you know, um, I will some of the because some of these subscriptions are to kind of avoid a future pain. Right. So like with your car, getting the tune ups and the maintenance, you're doing that to avoid the, the future pain of having a massive bill. You yeah. know what I mean? Or something that doesn't get caught early. I guess it's the same thing. Why you got to start going to the doctor uh, in a shorter interval as you get older. Right. Yeah. It's to catch something early. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm actually so open to that. Like if the if the plumber says, Hey, we should come and check things out every year. I'm like, okay, I, I don't want a problem. I know I'm paying you hundreds of dollars right now. And, 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 and I could have avoided this, you know what yeah. I mean? And my, um, my mind changed with, with the first time I launched my website maintenance plan was that was just that, like, instead of your plugins getting out of date and then getting hacked, eventually, if we manage a month to month, there we go. We're going to avoid a, a huge problem later on. So yeah, and web design, oh my gosh, just like anything, there's so many avenues for it, which is awesome. Like that's, I, I personally, man, I feel like web design is one of the coolest, best industries to be in right now. Yeah. It comes with its hardships, just like everything, but the sky really is the limit, right? With, with, with the type of business you'd want to build and web design. I mean, it, I, I feel like that. How, how are you, how do you feel like that about the landscape of web design and WordPress now? I think people, bus all businesses need solutions and the starting point is actually the website. So if you can wrap, uh, 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 packages around it that will help that person get what they need. The, w the website is just the entry point, you know what I mean? And that's where then it gets exciting, right? So like that card abandonment solution, if you have a client with e-commerce and they're not using card, but Hey, you know, I'll implement this for you. What we'll do is we'll look at the numbers every month and uh, I'll just take a 10% cut of what I capture for you. So if I capture a thousand dollars this month for you. I'm, I get a hundred of it. You know what I mean? There's like all kinds of creative ways that you can help businesses and then help yourself make uh, more money. You know, there's this uh, new advent of AI content writers where you can do very easily do the kind of content local businesses need, like on a blogging basis. If you're a web designer, you're like, there's no way I'm going to offer content writing services, but there's agencies now cranking out content for local businesses and they're using AI to assist. Not it doesn't fully do it. Mm, it yeah. it assists you in it, and then you just tweak it a little bit, and you get some SOPs together. Um, that problem with the uh, uh, staying in contact with ex uh, co past customers for these visits, that's a problem they all have. Oh, you mm -hmm. know, we'll set this whole system in place and it'll be all automated. They'll send these five emails and we'll send them on these. Uh, maybe on their birthday, we send this as well. And you will set it up and we'll manage the whole thing. It's only $99 a month. You don't even have to worry about it. We'll manage the whole thing and we'll give you a report to let you know how many emails got sent out. You can create these things that will change the business you know, but these are things. So to, to answer your question, it's probably the most exciting time uh, post COVID because now all anyone that has a business realizes online, online is the key online is the ticket. You know what I mean? It, it, uh, the traditional advertising, traditional ways of, of um, uh, staying in contact, getting leads and all, it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore. It all has to be online. That's great. Well, what what a great way to to kind of summarize and, and put a cap on all this, man, because I definitely I agree. And um, 
I think when it comes to content, it's more important than ever. Our whole conversation has really been mostly around content creation for web designers and how to merge this all in with your business to grow it and to get clients and to help them. And it's true. It now is the time. So man, Adam, I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, this has been a great conversation, man. Uh, we've gone well over an hour and it's flown by here. So you've dished out some really, really cool stuff. Um, I got one final question for you, but before we get to that, before I let you go, um, where would you like people to go to, to check you out? And I think you were talked about maybe a special offer for my listeners, if I recall, right? Yeah. Well, I would love if everyone listening to this will go over and subscribe to my YouTube channel because that's where I put out uh, most of my content. That's how I interact with people. It's really easy to get there. You just go to youtube.com slash WP crafter. Boom. It's going to take you right there and click on subscribe. And I'd love to get to know uh, you in the comments, leave a comment. And I'd love to read that and respond. Uh, but yeah, I do actually, we didn't talk about all the products I have. I have lots of different products. And so let's, let's put together some unheard of un seen before discounts for the li the listeners here so um why don't we put that at wpcrafter.com slash josh hall i'll have that up and we'll have those there i've got some great stuff that we didn't even talk about um uh, one of them is really interesting and it's probably very interesting for your audience and it's called orderable um mm -hmm. you, you might not have come across that i have this I video haven't, i haven't uh, seen that yet no i i had this video where i i talk about this uh domain I, I bought for $20,000 and how I think it's crazy to spend that much, but I did it. And then I revealed that and it was for this product and it was orderable.com. Okay. I spent 20 grand I on saw, that domain name. I saw your post on that and I was like, dang, that is, that's way different than like a $5,000 domain, <laughs> which is wild too. But yeah, 20 K. So it was orderable. Yeah. I didn't know that was it. That's awesome orderable.com. So basically what that is, is it's in, um, you can add that to your website and it's for uh, enabling any local business to take local pickup and delivery orders. And it goes much beyond restaurants. Restaurants is obvious, like obvious, right? But uh, there's all kinds of things or uh, businesses like, like a florist, you know what I mean? Someone, you, you wrap a solution with Audible where they can uh, choose their, their bouquet that they want and make some product selections that can increase the price or whatever. Then they can choose a pickup time. Yeah. Um, it does, it does all of that. Um, so obviously restaurants is the most, uh, so W WP crafter.com slash Josh Hall. You'll have some, some resources yeah. there and a promo for all my listeners. Give us your top five, Adam. What are your, what are your top five products that they don't have to be by revenue? Like what are your top five favorite things that you got right now? Yeah. So I don't actually even have five products. <laughs> so, oh, okay. <laughs> but top three. Think, How about top three? Yeah. Top three. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the newest is orderable. Uh, and, um, then there's presto player, which is really close to my heart if, for video. Every website that has video on, uh, on it should be using presto player. Uh, then I, I have the free cart abandonment solution, but we also have cart flows itself, uh, for creating sales funnels. If you have clients that sell anything online, it's going to, we actually have some lead gen local lead gen funnels coming out to um uh, for local businesses uh, to be able to generate leads and generate revenue off those leads and uh, i've got the checkout solution coming and i have another secret product i'm not actually comfortable talking about but That's i think okay. you yourself <laughs> would personally be interested in using it you yourself oh. would personally actually i should get you presto player to, to throw on your online courses i would love get you free, to check uh, out presto player man I, I actually, yeah, I would love to check that out. I'm using Vimeo right now, so I would love to check that out. Yeah, I think I think it would it would fit uh, good with what you're what you're doing. Um, yeah. So awesome. Um, well, we'll have all these linked in the show notes. And again, wpcrafter.com slash Josh Hall. I know you're going to have something special for everyone listening. Um, man, this is awesome. We'll make sure we link to all that. Adam, thank you. First of all, I'm going to get a final question here, but just thank you for your time and for your expertise in this. I'm curious if you were sitting down with somebody and they're like, okay, this talk has been great. I'm pumped up, but I'm still a little overwhelmed with the type of content I should do for my clients. You know, should I do a YouTube channel? Should I blog? Should I do a podcast? Should I do short social media videos? What would you recommend to them to just help them get started with content creation? I am very partial to video and it's easier than ever to create video content 
it's ideal if you put your face in it. I think you got to put your face on everything. But if you're not ready for that, you don't even you don't really have to put your face in it, although I definitely strongly recommend it. And it, it, it's the easiest content to create. I think more goes into a podcast. Um more effort goes into creating a podcast. That's why I haven't done it. Um, I think more effort goes into writing. Uh, that's why I don't do a good job at it. I think video is just the easiest thing. And you know what? I bet you all your clients are actually already have what it takes. All, all the people listening to this. Sorry, I said clients. I meant to say everyone listening to this already has what it takes because I guarantee you they're getting on the phone with people and explaining things to them. They're getting on uh, uh, maybe a screen share and explaining how to do something or, you know, what, what, what do you do when you create a website? You got to show it to someone and you got to like explain it. Oh, and this here and then click here and it does this. And isn't this great? And this is going to do this for you. They already do it. The only thing is they did, they're not recording it. Yeah, that's well said. It's so true, especially when it comes to anything you got to repeat. Make a video out of that bad boy. Make it something, like you said, make it a worker that will work for you 24-7 even when you're sleeping. I'll back you up on that, man. Totally agree. Adam, oh, this let, is uh, I'm gonna, No, no, I want to pause you for one second. I want to oh, add sure. one thing to take the intimidation out. This this can this this tool can take the intimidation out uh, and it's kind of a new breed of tools. So you think when I click on record, I have to know like everything I'm going to say and there can't be pauses and I can't stop and think about it and this, that and the other. There's this great tool. Unfortunately, like I use the it's Mac only. It's called you might have heard of it yourself. Have you ever heard of Recut? It's a newer product. You go to getrecut.com. It's dirt cheap. Uh, so essentially, actually, it used to be cheaper. They just raised the price to $99, but it's like a one-time cost. And what, what it does is you click on record and you can start explaining something. And if you don't know what you're going to say next, just sit there and be quiet and think about what you're going to say next. And then continue saying what you're going to say next. And if you make mistakes, you say, oh, cut that last bit out. And you leave these pauses so you can really say something clear. And so what happens yeah. is you record it and then you just toss it and recut and it's going to take a look at your video and all those silences, it's just going to slice them right on out for you. It's going to pretty much edit the whole thing for you. Uh, it's called recut. It's $99 one time fee. It's not a subscription. It makes it really easy. And then it will export it with these slices already done for you. And it will also, uh, they just added a feature where you can also like cut out pieces of it too. So it cuts out the silences, but then you can also cut out some of the talking and it's like literally editing in like three minutes. Wow. But it, it, that, so you don't have to do it yourself. I'm, Cause yeah, that that's why a lot of video can be time consuming is if you go in and really polish and edit everything, that's where it can, that's, the, that's the kicker there. Yeah. But the intimidation of video is when you, you're like, I don't have this scripted out and I don't recommend scripting it out. So Good you're sitting there and you're like, what am I going to say next? You can just pause, be quiet, think about what you're going to say next, and then start saying you what you're going to say next. That's um, awesome. Um, for There's another um, uh, app that does this, and it takes it even one step further, um, three or four steps further. Have you heard of Descript? Yes. I just recently heard about that. Yeah, so Descript will take the pauses out and it will also take out ums and ahs. So you can say, because it creates a transcript of everything you say and it can, you can say, search for all the ums and ahs and it will just cut it right out for you. Yeah. So you can sound more polished. And they just added a really cool feature. That's the last thing I'm going to say. It's more You're expensive, good. by the way. They had a brand new feature called Studio Sound. So mm. you you can have just a basic mic and you click one checkbox and it EQs the audio. It gets rid of any background noises, all of that. It makes you sound like like you sound on your your mic uh, there, Josh. <laughs> uh, it, get, it gives you that studio sound. They just released that as a beta feature two days ago. Uh, gotcha. That costs more money. Uh, so depending on your budget, but it's Mac or PC. And it's I think it's only like $20 a month. So you can get it for like a month or two, make and some what, videos and then cancel. What was that one called again? <laughs> it's called Descript. Uh, Descript so right. yeah, Descript. It's probably Descript.com. I've had that for years, uh, two years, actually, not years, year and a half. Yeah. It's only been out and for you know, a year I, and a half. I do want to say too, for folks new to video, I, I personally don't like getting too polished. I, I think you're going to get better the more you get on camera and stuff. And while, you know, the, the Descript in particular, like 
if you say some ums and ahs, yeah, you don't want too many, but I would rather have just a real three minute video that a client gets to know, like, and trust you rather than having like too polished. So I would encourage folks who do need more of like a polished video that's going to go out to a lot of people, you know, polish it up. But yeah, like if it's just a simple, like get to know me video, make it real too. Like it doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be this massive production. So, um, it's kind of cool with video. You can do both. You can go time consuming and editing and production, or you can keep it super simple. Um, so all the ways to go about it. So, Man, Adam, thanks so much for your time. Like I said, I want to be respectful, and I know you got plenty going on. So thank you for joining us today for your time and for uh, sharing some of your advice and experience. Like I said, not everyone listening is going to have a YouTube channel closing on 20 million views, but by golly, we're all looking to help clients and serve people, and uh, you've done it at scale, and I think all these principles we're able to apply. So, So thanks so much for your time today, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody that listened this far. Um, and if you ever have any questions for me or you want to ask me something, I'm like just a normal dude. Uh, you can literally leave a comment on my channel. I have a contact form on my website. I have everyone and their mother just Facebook messages me. I can't like respond to everybody through Facebook Messenger, yeah. uh, but I'm a normal I feel guy. Honored. I feel honored I got the response because I know that's how I hit you up for this. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, because we're friends on Facebook, so it like made it. But like, yeah, you know, the, um, yeah. 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 So. Uh, but I'm, I'm an open book to, to people. I just genuinely naturally like to help people. So if anyone listening wanted to ask me something regarding this, just feel free to reach out to me and I'll, I'll be just as friendly and welcoming to you as I am to, to Josh. I'm here for you guys is basically what I'm trying to communicate. That's awesome, Adam. Thanks so much, man. We'll have all these links and everything. So till next time, man. Hey guys and gals, just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts and search this episode number and you'll find all the links, descriptions and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.